I feel like doing a kit build today. This little audio amplifier kit here. Um, it's based on the TDA 2030 amplifier chip, that guy there. And it's just a little uh, audio power amplifier. Um, I'm, I used to uh, do a lot of work with audio back in the day. And I just like a simple little kit like this once in a while just to play with. Oh, uh, before I get carried away here, uh, Corsair Brown Ale, because I know somebody's going to ask, an English Brown Ale from Quebec, of all places to find an English Brown Ale. And it's quite nice, actually. Um, anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. The circuit. Um, so you can see here that they've just represented it like an amplifier block, um, like an op amp or whatever. Um, except for it's good for, you know, 15 watts, according to this, or 14 watts, or something like that. Anyway, um, so basically we've got a DC block capacitor coming on the inside um, to the non-inverting input. The inverting input uh, has 100K feedback resistor with a bit of a voltage divider to ground. Um, the input has couple hundred K to ground and hundred K to the positive rail. Interesting. And then, a, um, just a little filtering capacitor in there. Another filtering capacitor down there, uh, 10 ohm, uh, load resistor with a DC block and another DC block going out to the speaker. Not much going on. Uh, we have on the DC input, uh, blocking capacitor or blocking resistor rather ah, that's not a hang on okay that is in fact a dc steering diode to make sure that we don't get reverse voltage on this guy right and then a big capacitor and a little capacitor just to do some dc filtering because you don't want uh, any hum and crap coming in from your power line getting induced into your circuit here do you no no you don't do we want to know more about this little amplifier guy before we get into this sure let's just take a second and look at the uh look at the data sheet so here it is the tda 2030 uh, 14 watt hi-fi audio amplifier supply voltage up to 36 volts you can either use a single which is positive and ground or a split which is positive ground and negative voltage so it is a class a b amplifier which uh class a is probably the cleanest type of amplifier uh but it's not the most efficient class b is much more efficient amplifier and a b is kind of somewhere in between at plus and minus 14 volts or 28 volts single-sided it can do uh 14 watts into 4 ohms Oh, sorry, uh, can do 12 watts into a 4 ohm mode and 8 watts in an 8 ohm mode. Okay, that's reasonable enough. I mean, we're not trying to do concert sound here. So here is just an example circuit uh, using what is this, a single-sided power supply. Yeah, um, which actually, minus these diodes here, it looks quite similar to the one in our uh, schematic there that came with our uh, our kit here and there's a test circuit uh, using the dual ended supply there's negative voltage positive voltage and ground in between but that's not what we're doing all right so here is our our kit components um, and it comes with interestingly enough a little piece of heat sink um, thermal conductive pad, a little plastic top hat washer, and a screw for the heat sink. So how you do this, if you're going to do it, is you'd use that little top hat washer, put it in there. That way the screw can't come in contact with the metal work. Put that in there. You could use that gooey heat sink compound as well. Then you screw that onto the heat sink. So now it's electrically isolated from heat sink, but it's in good thermal contact. But as I mentioned, I'm not going to do that. 
all the values are marked on the board and pretty good silk screen on this side tinned pads and solder mask this is that fiberglassy stuff fr something or other i know there's a name for it i don't really care that much it doesn't matter it's just the fiberglassy type of board that's all i really care about so let's uh clamp it up in this guy and get going and i think i shall start with the resistors just because some of these guys stand up fairly tall off the board so might as well get the low-lying components first as uh, i'm sure i've mentioned before I've got some colorblind issues and these bluish kind of background resistors or whatever they are are even worse to try and see so that one is the 10 ohm resistor so that's why i'm going to check them all with my meter um, those of you who have better eyes and can actually see these little buggers then go for it with the color code but because color is an unreliable source of information for me i choose not to trust it so what do we got here that guy is 4.7 k so that 10 ohm resistor is this guy over in the load side the 4.7 k is this one that makes the voltage divider in the feedback circuit That's going to be a little bit difficult stuffing those guys in there. Yes, there you go. Oh, that goes. Okay, I think I'm going to slide that board over that way so that I can get that going. Oh, I should turn my soldering iron on here. Get him down where I can get at him nicely. Yes, I'm using the Fake Old Beku. No, it's not a Hiko, but it's got all compatible parts. Um, I've been using this one for uh, over a year, year and a half now. And I have no complaints with it whatsoever. Even though it is completely fake. And uh, yeah, it just does the job. Use my nice skinny MG6040 solder here. Up the temperature. Get these first couple of resistors soldered in. So I noticed that for a while there, there were quite a bunch of people doing basic kit build videos, and it seems to have gone by the wayside for a while. I'm wondering if people just got tired of doing them. Or they got busy in their real life. Or if they decided that they'd prefer to uh, get into the circuit board design game themselves. You know, there's quite a lot of people uh, doing videos sponsored by the various uh, circuit board manufacturing companies lately. So, yeah, maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. I still enjoy doing a nice basic kit once in a while, just for a change of pace. So these four resistors are all the same. And they are the 100K, which I guess I should have known because that's all that's left for resistors. Do a gentle little bend here. I'll kink them off underneath the board just to make sure they stay where I've put them when I flip the board over. I'm still going to uh, give them a nudge, but hmm, that's not super neat. Okay, there's those two. Actually, where's my pliers? I'm gonna just tug this guy a little bit. Just get them sitting down in there better. Need to bend these a little bit tighter to the to the body of the part, I think. These holes are just barely spaced enough to get at them. And 
where does the fourth one go? Oh, up there, okay. There we go. Somebody zoom in a bit here. Got to be a bit careful. I don't want to throw it out of focus. I don't want to push it so far back that all of a sudden I'm working at arm's length. Give my tip a quick clean every joint or two here. Why didn't you solder? There you go. And yeah, I'm somewhat random on these guys. That's okay. They don't care what order they get soldered down in. These little amplifier kits would make a really good beginner project or like inexperienced soldering uh, through hole kind of project. And I know that uh, surface mount is the new hotness that all the cool kids are doing these days, but I think I mentioned already, I just, I like a nice old school kind of circuit every once in a while. Just for the fun of it. Now somebody's probably going to complain that I'm clipping through the solder. And yes, if I was working for NASA, that would be verboten. But I'm not, I'm just some guy in his basement tinkering away, soldering and drinking beer. Okay, that's the resistors. Let's, uh, let's get that DC uh, steering or blocking diode in there. Slide the board over a little bit in the holder again so I can get at it easily. So one downside of these tiny little boards, it's kind of hard to get a grip on them easily with the components right near the edge I mean, you can do it obviously but and of course you don't need a soldering tool or a soldering uh, holder like this I've got a video that I did a while back showing a bunch of different uh, options that I've got to hold a board all of them are perfectly valid some work better than others um, some work better for some situations than other situations, too. So where's these two little uh, 0.01 microfarad caps? Um, 0.01104s. They are, one of them's up there in the DC cleanup, and one of them is here just as a DC block on the load side. Let's drop those guys in. Well, wow. that was completely accidental, but I got both of the uh, sets of lettering facing the same way. I uh, I don't bother myself about that. Some people get really concerned about it. Again, I'm not all that bothered, especially not for a hobby project. Close enough for rock and roll which is probably a lot of what this little guy is going to be doing. There. Preview those up and nobody would ever know. Okay, next largest thing. We have some capacitors. I've got to be a little bit careful. There's uh, 222 microfarads and one 2.2. Let's make sure that I've got two. There's a 22... There's a 22, and this one's a 2.2. They're physically a slightly different size, so it's not that big a deal. Now the negative side towards the negative little indicator on the board. It matters on these electrolytic capacitors. And if you're not careful, you can cause them to overheat and erupt. Which is spectacular if you have witnesses. 
It's not going to happen every time, and it depends on how they're applied in the circuit. Um, neither of these ones are right across the power supply. Um, this guy, this this big guy over here, is though right across the power supply. So if I got him backwards, he would make a loud noise and a smoky smell. Once again, proving the old adage that. Everything's a smoke machine if you uh, hook it up incorrectly enough. So now then, here is the 2.2 microfarad. Goes in there. What's that one doing? Oh, that's the input DC block capacitor. Okay. So basically that's, uh, that's chosen so that it doesn't block the audio frequencies that we're interested in. But being a capacitor, it does block the DC. And there's another one in series on the output. Although it's a different value, it is. This guy here, the... No, that's a 100. Okay, where does that guy go then? Oh, no, this... So this one is the one that goes across the power supply. And it is... We focused here. It is a 35 volt, 100 microfarad. So that's the one that we have to be most careful about getting in the right polarity. There's the little bar for negative, and there's the negative stripe there. That's the one that would make a loud noise and a nasty smell. It is very spectacular when they go off, and it takes a few seconds. So you get a little bit lulled into a false sense of security when you uh, turn the thing on and nothing bad happens. And then all of a sudden something bad happens. Um, 220 microfarad capacitor, that is the one that's in series with the output as a DC block. Stuff him in there. We're starting to run out of components already. That was easy. Okay, I think before I put the amplifier chip on, the amplifier transistor module device, I will put these header pins in. I need two for the input, two for the output, two for power, and three spares. How nice. Uh, these guys, I don't think I'm going to be able to, yeah, they're not going to hold in there. Let's throw some of our old friend of the blue tack on there. And the output up there. Well, that's awkward. Let's pick up those pins later. And the audio input pins over here. Originally, I was thinking that I'd just let this video roll with pretty much no editing. But then it occurs to me I probably want to test it. So I'm going to have to do a small edit to get that in. And I think maybe speed up a little bit as well. So those pins are slightly bent, which tends to happen on the boat from China. So I'm not sure whether you caught it uh, when I was looking at the data sheet earlier, but there's a big watermark across it that says that um, this is an obsolete part or obsolete information, at least from the original manufacturer, which is ST. Not that that matters. So I think there's other copies of it out there. I'm not even sure if this one is an ST. I should have looked closer at it before I started soldering it. Doesn't matter. Okay. That's everything soldered in. Um, okay, quick look with the magnifier and uh, just make sure everything's soldered in. Oh, that's splattery and ugly, but it's not shorting. 
So that's all I really care about. Everything's connected to where it should be and not to anything that's not supposed to be. I think that'll do nicely. Let's turn off the soldering iron and clean up the workbench a little bit and set up some tests of some sort here. Hmm. Okay, I've got it set up with my little power supply here. I've got 12-ish volts on it. It's for 200 milliamp current limit, so it doesn't run away completely. I'm just nothing connected for inputs and outputs right now. And turn it on. 20-ish milliamps uh, just idling. That's not bad. Hook up the speaker. You hear that? That's a good sign. All right, let's get some audio into it. Remember this guy from a mailbag previously? Let's plug him into the audio input. Turn it on. Ha ha! Volume up. Nice! That's excellent. Let's crank that volume all the way up. Oh, I've seen a peak of about 150 milliamps. Oh, down, 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 down. Not getting especially warm. Okay. Let's see if I can find a nicer speaker than that one. Hmm. That ought to do the job. loud and not sounding very distorted either it's sounding pretty clean cool well that's a result I wonder what else I can use hmm let's try this it's a horrible little guitar Oh yeah. Where's a pick? That's cool. Ha <laughs> ha I like it. And I've got a little boost on this guitar here. Okay, so this guitar just being, I mean, it's tiny. Look at this thing. It will not stay in tune. <laughs> this works pretty damn well. I'm impressed. And for just a quick little kit build, I don't know, how long did that take me? 15 minutes to slam it together? Maybe 20? Because I was talking? This is fun. I like this thing. All right, well, um, can I even reach my beer? Thanks for watching. Um, that was That was fun. That was nice, relaxing little time here. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you later. Comments, questions, down below. Yeah, you know.